the family? This is your girl, the new supporter, Mary Dash between the Mary Lee. Today is Sweet 16, Freaky Friday, October the 16th, 2020, to be exact. So they say in my city, Chicago, my continent, uh, America, and that I spell A M A R Y K C A. You understand what I'm saying? All right, family, this is Sweet 16. I hate to keep revisiting the past and you know, bring you up to speed or whatever, but um, I'm your ghetto news reporter. I coined that term, your ghetto news reporter, Mary and Dash Between the Mary and Lee. I have to put the Dash Between the Mary and Lee due to the fact there are so many copycats out there named Mary Lee, also Mary Lee Davis and stuff. One being a person that is a transgender, white man turned female, who wrote the book Working in Law and Justice back in 1999. His name also is Mary Lee Davis. And he decided to take on my identity as a lady or whatever, a writer and now, I guess, investigator slash I don't want to be the police, so don't think that I am working for them. I am not. I'm just trying to tell you my truth, my story, and my motherfucking legacy, for real, for real, and that the police and everybody else that are wannabes, you know, are doing, taking my motherfucking identity or whatever and stuff. Now, back in 1995, I put my voice to three cassette tapes and I sent them to Oprah Winfrey and I put three cassette tapes in the garbage of my alley in Hyde Park in my city, Chicago. You understand what I'm saying? Not too far from Elijah Muhammad's house, the guy that, you know, helped Malcolm X become who he was, is, if he's still alive. You understand what I'm saying? Because everybody they say is dead ain't dead. Long story short, when I put my voice to cassette tapes, front and back, three you know, and gave him to Oprah Winfrey because I gave her my um, child abuse rap in 1984 at the age of 17 because I am a victim of child abuse who was in the Sunday, in the Sun Times, Chicago Sun Times newspaper back in 1973. You have to excuse me, but I'm freestyling all this because I ain't got time to be fucking goddamn being a professional. That's why I'm your ghetto news reporter for all the ones who I try to be a professional for took me for granted. Now they just got to get it as it comes and stuff. So, People got a hold to my um my future and saw my potentials ever since I was six years old or whatever. When I stood up for myself in 1973 for being a child abuse victim when I didn't even know the difference between an apple and an orange. Now, with that said, I'm bring you up to speed. Today is, like I say, October, freaky Friday, 16th, sweet 16th, 2020 in my city, Chicago. Now, some people say it could be 2012. Who knows? Either way, the Mayan, the Mayan people... You know, an A calendar and the um, Gregorian calendar and, and, you know, the prison calendar. Everybody got their own time. They got color people time. They got all kind of time, nigga. They got Miller time. So you figure it out, nigga. What time is it? Who gives a fuck, right? It's the right time right now for you to listen to what the fuck I got to say. Now, I flipped the Bible that I got from um, Uptown in my city, Chicago, called the People's Church and shit. Now, on Wednesday... You can go get you a $5 McDonald card, and they'll give you a free Bible and some other things or whatever and stuff, you know. But the guys, they want to take over everything, especially my identity and stuff. Now, if you look at the top of that People's Church in Uptown on uh, Wilson right off of Sheridan, you will see my birthday, 525, May 5th. 525 is on the top. It's etched in stone and stuff. Real talk. I'm giving you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Now, I got this Bible, like I said, from the people's church when I was able to go there, but because this guy named Mike is robbing them blind, the homeless and everybody else and stuff, you understand what I'm saying? They didn't want me to go there, you know, when I was, you know, in between uh, uh, apartments and, you know, things of that nature. Because where I'm at now is a trap house and I don't have a lease. So I'm kind of like in between houses. Like niggas say they in between jobs and shit when they ain't got one and shit. They got one, but they don't got one. You know, they about to get fired or whatever the fuck. So, yeah, that's how it is with me. So I picked up this Bible when I was able to, you know, go. But I wasn't, I'm not able to go anymore because they didn't kick me out on some bullshit. I'm being railroaded for my rap legacy. I am the originator of rap for those who do not know. I don't drink drug or smoke fornicate, none of that shit. I'm just a nice motherfucker who got my shit together and shit after I'm realizing that the thieves in the world were, you know, trying to, you know, make me a problematic person and stuff, which I am not. They are because that's why I'm doing this video and stuff. You understand what I'm saying? Because I'm on the brinks of being homeless again. And I'm running out of resources. So I'm hoping I still got Mary McAmyers out there who's going to tax these niggas who robbing me and shit. 
like no tomorrow and shit for getting in my goddamn business. Real fucking so. Now, I flipped the Bible today to Romans chapter 6. My fault. We're going to put that in the link too because anything that I say is a, is a problem. You know, not a problem, but a, a problem for them. But, you know, it's relevant and shit. So we're going to put that in the description too because nothing happens in this world by mistake, right? But I flipped it to Romans chapter 16. As you can see, 16. Now, if you look right there real close, you will see my, my name. Hold on. Let me see if I can get it. It is verse 6. Uh, see that 6? You understand what I'm saying? It's still relevant. You understand what I'm saying? And what it says, Romans chapter 6, it says, Greet Mary who worked very hard for you. They didn't even sugarcoat it. They said, greet Mary, who has worked very hard for you. Verse 6, Romans chapter 16, verse 6. You understand what I'm saying? Now, this is on page 1141 in the Bible that I got from the People's Church in Uptown in my city, Chicago, and the same church that got my birthday 525 engraved in the building of the... Uh, of the um, church. Now I'm gonna try to find the video that I did pertaining to that truth. You understand what I'm saying? Now I work my butt off, and this is 11:41. Now at the age of 41, six days after my birthday, on May 31st, 2008, I got railroaded for so-called tinted windows, and then they lied and said that I disarmed the police officer, something I did not do. You understand what I'm saying? Real fucking talk. So 41 and 11 is what? 52 coming from behind that's 25 i was born may 25th 1967 see these are the games that people play and i i don't think like that but i had to think like my enemy because my enemy is cunning baffling so-called powerful you understand what i'm saying but i'm starting to take that power back because i had given them so much of my power that they, they abused it you understand what i'm saying and you know i need i need got to have that back you know they don't want to relinquish that body Pot that uh, power, you understand what I'm saying? Excuse me, like I said, because I'm freestyling and, you know, I'm not a rapper any longer. I'm a, a free thinker due to the fact that so many rappers out there, you understand what I'm saying, you know, just and took my rap legacy and did whatever. Now, rap was supposed to be a stepping stone for guys and gals who didn't want to drink drug, smoke, or sell drugs uh, and things of that nature, do wrong, right? So my higher power put it on me. You understand them to work hard and give them an outlet and shit. You understand what I'm saying? But they took it and tried to, you know, flip my shit and make it they shit by laundering they drug money with my rap money. And that's why, you know, I don't got no money and shit for real, for real. You know, I got a little something, you understand what I'm saying, to move the fuck out of here if it come down to it or whatever. And, you know, live for about a month, you understand what I'm saying, from, you know, hand to mouth or whatever, hoping somebody out there, you know, would... You know, I'm going to give me a sign that say, uh, I'm not begging, but I could use the help. You understand what I'm saying? That's what I'm going to do. That's where I'm at now for all my real Mary McAmiras and my day ones and all that. This is what I'm going through and shit. So, long story short, um, I'm innocent. Rick Ross and motherfucking goddamn Freeway Rick Ross, the drug dealer, I believe, got together, you know, because... Rick Ross, the rapper now, who was a correctional officer, you understand what I'm saying, turned rapper, you know, he's the now, I guess, kingpin of rap or whatever and stuff, and he's mentioning DJ Khaled, who don't look nothing like him or, or me, and, you know, the freeway Rick Ross have taken a part of my identity since he didn't came out of prison, you understand what I'm saying, for being the kingpin of drugs, and now he's trying to you know, sell weed, you know, see, God has given people a stepping stone, even with the weed or whatever and stuff to, you know, save up some money and probably, you know, open up some, you know, uh, 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 sober living environments, recovery homes and things of that nature. But they want to continue to live. They fucking goddamn, you know, Scarface lifestyle or whatever, even with legalized weed. And that's why white people, before they even legalized weed, got as much as they could 
before, like I said, they legalized weed. They made a whole bunch of money and then they legalized it and then they let niggas in and shit. You understand what I'm saying? White people gonna always be ahead of you motherfuckers. And that's why Nicki Minaj and Eminem came up with the song Romans Revenge. I'll put that in the description of this video also called Rick Ross and Freeway Rick Ross, a.k.a. Diana Ross. I'm coming out too. video, motherfucker. I don't know shit. You understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, read the scripture, Romans chapter 16, because my sweet 16, you know, was in Department of Correction. I think it was in Naperville, Illinois, for teenagers and stuff. And in that fucking facility, because they said me being a child abuse victim and, you know, moving from place to place or whatever, because motherfuckers was trying to kill me like they're trying to kill me now. And I'm 53 years old now. You understand what I'm saying? Real talk. And they said they had nowhere else for me to go. In Chicago, my city, Chicago, where I was born, I'm a native of, and um, they took me to Naperville, Illinois, and put me in the Department of Correction after leaving another place called Herrick House in um, Naperville or whatever and stuff. And, you know, game-banging girls was trying to get me to be, I, I guess, a game-banger. They've been following me now that I think about it all my life and shit. You understand what I'm saying? Trying to you know, make me one of them because they knew my potentials and stuff and they knew what they did to me as a little girl and they knew I stood up for myself at the age of six back in 1973 and, you know, because I was a child abuse victim they've been trying to kill me ever since. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, my sweet 16th birthday, it was this white girl in there and I remember Good Times was on the goddamn TV and um, this game banging girl wanted me to beat up the white girl who was pregnant. I was like, I ain't finna beat her up and stuff. You know what I'm saying? You know, they think I'm, you know, I'm crazy. You know, it's a sucker born every day, you know, a fool or whatever the fuck. You know, I don't know what the fuck they thought. Long story short, that ain't me. So I said, no, nah, I ain't going to do that. And so I remember being in a, um, in a cell with my, um, so-called best friend, Charlotte Hawkins, and she was a thief. And at this time I was putting music together that my, you know, foster mother, Betty Jean Redman had sent me a, a cause set, you know, tape player or whatever, and, you know, and I'm the originator of rap. I started at 1335 East 75th Street in my city of Chicago with my so-called foster family, the Repmans and stuff, and my foster sister, Kimberly Repman, is out there. She know what the fuck going on. I wish she'd speak the fuck up. I can't speak this loud about something I don't know. You understand what I'm saying? Be the boss for once. You understand what I'm saying? Real fucking tough. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, they know who I am. They know I'm the originator of rap or whatever and stuff. So, you know, my um, so-called Sally in the detention center, Charlotte Hawkins, the, shit, the thief, you know, knew I was putting music together. I could put it together off the radio that back then you could tape it and they would not say a word or whatever until the very end. And by the time I got done with the cassette tapes, putting the songs together, you would have thought I was a professional. Real fucking talk. You understand what I'm saying? And I was so good and they always wanted to know what I was thinking or whatever and stuff. You understand what I'm saying? So they were still the music and shit. You understand what I'm saying? So long story short... You know, they made it where, you know, something happened. I had to go to detention by myself, solitary confinement, you know, and I was turning about 16. And my um, foster mother, Betty Jean Remy, said she had sent me a, a birthday gift and I never got it. So, you know, I snapped and shit. You understand what I'm saying? But not only that, you know, this white lady, she was a correctional officer, big as fuck, you know, and I was just a teenager going through my own little shit, trying to, you know, like I'm doing now. And she was trying to intimidate me. And something told me, I swear, something told me. I don't know who it was, but it had to be my high power. You know, they hit her ass and I hit her ass and shit. You know what I'm saying? I broke her nose and shit, real fucking talk. And they've been, you know, using that as an excuse to railroad me ever since when she's the one that started it, the white correctional officer or whatever and stuff. So it doesn't, it doesn't, um, it doesn't behoove me that Rick Ross used to be a correctional officer and, you know, all these motherfuckers coming after me and shit. You understand what I'm saying? So Rick Ross, Freeway Rick Ross and stuff, you know, now he got an um, insurance called Freeway uh, Freeway um, Insurance, but it used to be called Insure One. You understand what I'm saying? And it had my birthday connected to it. I'm going to try to find a video and put it in there to prove it or whatever. And they changed it. So all these motherfuckers jumping on the bandwagon to kill me. You'll get a news quarter man dash between the man and Lee. But I got news for them. You understand what I'm saying? I'm the one that got you out. I'm the one that put you on. And you know what I'm saying? Not willingly. You understand what I'm saying? But through my higher power, God give it. God take it away. And I swear to God, you kill me and put me out this time, nigga. You already know. Real Mary McAmyris, real motherfuckers and shit that worked your ass off to be a real American for the American dream and shit. Get their ass by any means necessary. And Malcolm X, still alive, if he's still alive, get his ass too. And with that, this will get a news. Put a man dash between the Mary Lee. Freestyle. Freeway. Willie.
Peace.